do you ever feel like you just don't know why you are reacting the way that you are and you're feeling so much shame around maybe shouting, maybe not being able to get out of bed in the morning, maybe you just want to hide under your duvet. Well, in this episode, I'm going to help you lift that shame. I'm going to explain to you exactly why from a neurophysiological perspective, why you act the way that you do. So by the end of this episode, you are going to be literally going, oh, Caroline, you mean it isn't my fault and I have no control over how I feel? Correct. So stay tuned because I'm going to take you exactly through why you feel the way that you do. Hi, everybody. My name is Caroline Strawson and I'm a positive psychology trauma coach and somatic therapist, helping people just like you move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth after the trauma of narcissistic abuse. Because let's be honest, it, it is abuse and it is trauma. And when we talk about trauma, we have to talk about our nervous system too. Now, if you are a new listener, a new watcher to my channel, a massive welcome to you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss any of my episodes. Because as you can see through my channel, my wish is that you watch my episodes, feel inspired, feel educated, and feel hope. Hope that how you feel right now is not how you have to he um, feel forever. I was going to say heal, because <laughs> you can heal from all of this, because trauma can be healed. No matter what are you here, trauma can be healed. So I want to take you through in this episode, you know, why do you feel the way that you do? So let me ask you this question. Do you sometimes feel like you wake up in the morning and you literally just want to hide under your duvet? You literally don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to see anyone. You don't want to speak to anybody. And when you eventually get out of bed, you feel like you're walking in treacle. And even opening that front door to walk outside that door feels like you are climbing Mount Everest. Or maybe you feel like you just want to rage at everybody. You feel so angry. Your heart is pounding all of the time. You're picking your skin. Your shoulders are up. Your jaw is clenched. You can feel it in your throat. All of these things are all about your nervous system. And this is what I want to talk to you about in this episode, how your nervous system relates to narcissistic abuse, because how you feel and how you react is not your fault. It is your nervous system becoming dysregulated to perception of threat and danger, i.e. the narcissist. But that comes from not just the narcissist, from past experiences. You know, when we talk about trauma, Trauma isn't the narcissist. It's not an event or a person per se. What it is, is your inability to cope in your nervous system for whatever reason in that moment. It's too much, too quick, too fast, or even too slow sometimes to allow the body to integrate those messages, to allow you to complete those response cycles, to know that you are now safe in the present moment. Your system literally remains stuck stuck from past experiences. So when the narcissist looks at you a certain way or says something, ooh, it takes you back to those past experiences. Your body is like danger, 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 and you react in a certain way. And we go into these trauma responses, fight, flight, freeze, and even fawn when we talk about narcissistic abuse. So I want to introduce you to something that I created in the hope that it will really help you understand your nervous system or more precisely your autonomic nervous system. And that is the traffic lights of tolerance. So our autonomic nervous system is actually at the heart of our lived experiences. It tells the story of our lived experiences. You know, how many times do you feel like you are reacting and you kind of feel like you shouldn't react like that? but you have no control. That is your autonomic nervous system taking over. It's unconscious and it's all to do with our perception from our past experiences, scanning for those cues of safety and danger within our body and our brain. And then we react in a fight, flight, freeze response. We might react in fight, flight, feeling really, really angry or anxious, or we might go into a freeze response, depression, dissociation, numbing out. Now, if you look at the traffic lights of tolerance, this really helps you understand from a color perspective where you might be in your nervous system. Now, let me break this down. Our autonomic nervous system is actually split into two parts, our sympathetic, which is our fight flight, and then our parasympathetic, which is our green and our red. And that is actually our freeze response and our social engagement system where we feel more connected to other people. 
Now, what we want to be living our life, even with the narcissist around, is in that green light, in what we call self-leadership, recognizing there are challenging situations around you. I mean, let's face it, the narcissist is a challenge, right? But I want to support you so that you still deal with the narcissist in the green light, in what we call a ventral vagal part of your nervous system, that parasympathetic nervous system. Now, our vagus nerve, many of you will hear, it's a bit of a buzzword, isn't it, at the moment, vagus nerve. Our vagus nerve runs down the back of our neck and into our body. It's for our facial expressions. It's how we hear. It's literally linked to everything from our torso upwards. And the green light is really from here upwards. It's our social engagement part of our nervous system. It's where we have like the coochie coo voices, head to the side, nice smiley, where you feel safe, the eye contact when you look at somebody else. And that green light has to be taught to us as children. When we come into this world as babies, we have the yellow and the red, but the green has to be taught by our parents and caregivers. It's pretty dangerous in this world as little babies when we come out. We are seeking that safety and attachment and connection from our parents and our caregivers. We're reaching out for that. And that's where that green light comes in, that ventral vagal part of our nervous system. It has to be taught. We need to have that connection to feel safe in this world, to co-regulate, to feel safe enough to self-regulate. And many people have never had that or they've had elements of that. You know, my mum was highly codependent, so I got a lot of that from my mum, but I got none of that from my dad. So there were some elements of safety and connection, but then there were other elements where it felt dangerous because my father was very unemotional too. So my perception of that was, there must be something wrong with me, it's dangerous, it's life-threatening. Even though it's not, that was my perception of it too. So the green light is where we want to be living our life with the narcissist, in what we call ventral vagal, in self-leadership, even though there are lots and lots of challenges, still coming from a place of safety, of connection and recognizing that we are okay. What happens is due to our past experiences, which is not just about the narcissist when we feel like this, when we talk about trauma, in any given moment, and this can be the narcissist shining a great big spotlight on all the other wounds that you will have often from your childhood and just reinforcing all of those, our perception then of the narcissist is it is dangerous and threatening. And we will then maybe shift into the yellow light and that is into our sympathetic nervous system. We mobilize more energy. So we have more cortisol, more adrenaline, more norepinephrine in our bodies in anticipation of danger to go into fight or flight. Now, if we were animals and we were being attacked by a predator, we need to fight or we need to run away. The problem being is the narcissist, they might seem like a predator, right? But actually, more often than not, we're still actually safe. It's not life-threatening, but our body perceives it as life-threatening and dangerous. And that's why we go into a fight-flight response. It's trying to protect us from feeling something that we felt in childhood. Often this is a belief about ourselves. So the danger becomes not feeling not good enough or not feeling worthy or important or lovable. That becomes our version of danger, like we're being attacked. And of course, the narcissist is going to really trigger that perception of danger and we move into a fight flight response. Now, when I talk about fight flight, that doesn't mean we fight and it doesn't necessarily mean we run away. If we talk about this from a human perspective, that may well be we get angry. We mobilize that energy of, of anger. We mobilize that energy of anxiety. You know, anxiety is actually a sympathetic trauma response to our perception of danger. And when we do the inner work and we do, really do the somatic work, for instance, when I use this in my community, and with my clients in, in my programs, we really start to understand that anxiety is there to keep you stuck and to stop you from doing something because the perception of your inner system is if you do that, something bad or dangerous will happen. So the anxiety part kicks in to try and just keep you stuck to stop you from doing something else. OK, so anxiety, anger, they are examples really of parts of us that are in our sympathetic nervous system to the perception of danger. Now, we still perceive threat and danger in our nervous system because we're scanning around for cues of safety and danger. And that's what our nervous system and our brain will do. And what happens is if we still perceive that we'll shift into the red light the freeze response. This is where we start to shut down. This is maybe when we don't want to get out of bed. And what happens is that mobilized energy that we have from a fight flight, everything starts to become centralized to our major organs. Just like if you were going into shop almost, everything's just about protecting your heart, your brain. And that's why we start to feel really tired because the energy goes to keeping those 
functioning, not the limbs moving for a fight flight response. So that's why many of us, when we are in the depths of narcissistic abuse, in the red light, in that freeze response, in what we call our dorsal vagal part of our nervous system, and we go into the shutdown, everything feels like an effort. We feel tired. Literally, it's like picking your arms and your legs up to even walk feels an effort. That is not your fault. It's because your nervous system is perceiving all of this threat and danger, not because that actually is. It's about your perception of danger, often the beliefs. And that is your version of being attacked, your version of danger. And your system is like, oh, danger, danger, danger. And you go into that freeze response. It's actually trying to protect you and keep you safe because your inner system thinks, if you're in a freeze response and you're not doing anything, at least you're alive, box ticked. And we are built literally for survival and those biological responses. Sadly, we're not driven by happiness, wealth, success. I know that's what we want, but actually we are driven by survival and to be in the least amount of pain. So if we're in freeze, not getting out of bed, that is our nervous system saying, I want to keep you here because at least you're safe. If you get out of bed and you go and mobilize some energy, you might see some people the narcissist that's dangerous because they're going to make you feel not good enough and that's going to take you back to some pain you felt when you were three or five or 10 or 13 don't want to go there because that's too painful for you to feel so our nervous system is really navigating scanning for cues of safety and danger of which element of those traffic lights of tolerance that you can be in and this hierarchy this is how our nervous system works you know we have this green light the social engagement part of our nervous system the connecting even if there are challenges in our life, we can still come from a place of our ventral vagal part of our nervous system. The moment we start to scan for those cues of danger, we shift into fight or flight, we mobilize more energy. It might be where we're angry or anxious. And then if we still perceive threat and danger, we'll shift into that freeze response. We go into shutdown. That's the depression, the um, dissociation, the numbing out, because all of these are driven by unconscious actions it's wired within us it's literally in the fascia of our body that's why if we want to heal the trauma of narcissistic abuse just saying all of these things actually doesn't make too much difference other than validating you you have to work in the body why do you perceive the narcissist as dangerous life-threatening even though consciously you know that they're not actually life-threateningly dangerous your nervous system and your body is telling a different story you know i've done other videos on this there's a really great video i really encourage you to go and watch brain damage and narcissistic abuse, the brain changes that happen, because it will really help you understand then what's actually going on in your brain around all of this. So with that one, and then this one around the nervous system, this is what I teach. This is what I believe you should know. If you knew what happens in your brain, if you knew what happens in your body with your nervous system, these traffic lights of tolerance, knowing when you're in ventral vagal, knowing when you're in sympathetic, knowing when you're in freeze or dorsal vagal, you would start to see, ah, oh, so it's not my fault then. This is just wired in messages all the way back from in utero. This can literally come down for being in utero because, you know, children who are born, for instance, who come into this world. I mean, for me, when I was born, I was born six weeks early. I was put in an incubator as well. That for me is not helping tone my green light of my nervous system. You know, that is saying the world is dangerous. The world is dangerous. And that is wiring in right from the word go that people, the world, they're dangerous. And it's already setting my nervous system up for a fight flight response, crying. Nobody's coming because I'm in an incubator. So then I'm quiet and I go into the red light. I go into freeze. That starts to get wired in. And then everything else that is layering up, my dad behaving in a certain way, not showing the love and affection that I so crave, not getting the praise that I wanted, even though I was this people pleasing, high achieving perfectionist. What was happening then was I kept thinking, well, that must be because of me. I'm not good enough. That felt really, really painful. And that became my version of danger. So then every time the narcissist was making me not feel good enough, my system was on alert going, oh, danger, danger, danger. And I was literally going into the red light. I live most of my 30s in my red light, in freeze, literally in what we call functional freeze. So I look like I was functioning, but I was actually in that freeze response. I'd love to hear, can you relate to any of these? Can you relate to feeling angry and anxious all of the time? 
That's when you're in your yellow light. That's when you're in your sympathetic because there is some reason why you are perceiving threat and danger. You may know that there isn't. And I'm talking about life-threatening danger. That's how we're built as human beings. But because we have our neocortex, we start to add different meanings and stories to things and it becomes painful for us. You know, how many of you are living in your red light as well? Feeling depressed, feeling like you don't want to get out of bed or see people because your system's going, oh, people are dangerous. I'm going to put you in a freeze response. Don't want you to see anyone. Don't want you to speak to anybody because if you do, it's dangerous and painful. So your whole system is working for you. It's never working against you. It's always working for you with loving intentions for you. But as we know, if you're struggling to get out of bed or you're feeling angry all of the time and you're stuck in these responses, either long after the danger has gone or you're constantly stuck in them because of the narcissist and you are literally going between your red light and your yellow light all of the time. You're producing more cortisol, you're mobilizing energy, you're going into freeze, you're burning out. This is where chronic fatigue, burnout, adrenal fatigue will start to come into play. Autoimmune disorders. How many of you are suffering with autoimmune disorders or IBS or digestive issues? That's because we're stuck in these trauma responses because your nervous system is perceiving for some reason that it is threatening and dangerous. Even though cognitively, you know, it may not be your nervous system, your body is telling a different story. Now, the only way that we can really help to shift all of that is to do somatic work and to do the body work. So that would be, say for me, I use things like somatic experiencing, internal family systems, brain spotting, EMDR, where we're really shifting that through the body. So we're not changing past events. What we're doing is we're changing your experience of those past events. So rather than my dad's being really unemotional and not praising me because I'm not good enough, we change the experience of that as, my dad wasn't praising me or telling me I'm good enough, but I know and feel I am good enough. And this was down to his childhood. And I can really see it through a different lens, but I feel it in my body. I've known all along that, but until I did my deep body work, then shifted that within my body, literally in the fascia of my body, then I would always be reacting. I'd say, I'm not reacting to the narcissist. I'm not going to say any of these things. But the moment that he did, bang, I'd shift into the yellow light. I'd shift into the red light. I'd be in sympathetic fight flight or I was in the red in dorsal vagal in my freeze response. And I would literally, especially when I was coming out and healing, I was literally gravitating between both of those. Only when I did my body work, only when I started to process all of this, it didn't change what has happened to me in any way, but it meant I could look and feel very different and sit in self-leadership in the green light of my um, nervous system. So this is your nervous system. Start to think about, am I living my life in the green light, in the driving seat, on go, in self-leadership, in our ventral vagal part? Or am I living in sympathetic, in a fight flight response all the time? Lots of cortisol in my body, even though there isn't actually any danger, but that's how I'm showing up. Or are you showing up in red, in freeze, dissociating, disconnected from your body, literally? You're, it's like you're walking around like a head. You're not actually feeling anything. You're numbing out all of the time, going through the motions. You know, I, God, I can relate to all of this. I don't know whether you guys can as well. But I felt so much shame around all of this. This you don't have any control over. This is your nervous system doing what it was designed to do. What we have to understand is why. What is that root cause resolution? We live in a society where we're managing the symptoms of this all the time. We're managing the symptoms of IBS. We're managing the symptoms of depression. We're managing the symptoms of dissociation. What I want you to really start to get curious about is the root cause of why are you in the yellow light? Why are you in the red light? Let's get that root cause resolution. Let's process that through the body. And if you want to look at my low cost healing program, my narcissistic trauma recovery program, I'll pop the link in the show notes for you as well. So you can have a little nose with that because this is what it includes. You really get to know your nervous system. You map out your nervous system. You really get to know what's your version of danger in all of this too. So let me know, where are you in your traffic lights of tolerance? Does that really help you understand? Because hear my words, it is not your fault. This is your nervous system, the natural biological survival responses to your perception of danger. And for whatever reason, you are perceiving the narcissist to be dangerous, even though they're not actually life-threateningly dangerous. That's not to say they're not challenging. Oh, they are, but it is not life-threatening. And if it is, 
obviously you need to seek out support for that as well because I get it sometimes it can be serious and that's a whole other video around that okay I'm talking about the narcissist who is abusing who is psychologically gaslighting manipulating controlling not actually life-threatening but for your nervous system you are perceiving it as dangerous and life-threatening that's why you are showing up in the way that you are in your nervous system okay let me know in the comments below and remember how you feel right now does not mean this is you forevermore. This can be changed. This you can process and work through. And I would love to help you move from post-traumatic stress, being stuck here, to post-traumatic growth in the green light, in self-leadership, in what we call ventral vagal. Take care. I hope that really helps you. It's not your fault. Let's lift that shame around all of that because you can move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth. Take care. Lots of love. See you on the next episode.